Hey there, everybody, and welcome. Today, I'm going to be playing a traditional solo game of Obsession with the Upstairs Downstairs expansion. A few weeks back, I recorded a playthrough with the Dynamic Solo AI, but this traditional solo game is more akin to beating a high score. As you can see, there are a number of solo cards here with different scores and varying levels of difficulty that all feature a preset number of victory points associated with each courtship and category that you're supposed to try and outperform. Also, each turn, the AI uh, rolls a 20-sided die and, more often than not, removes something from the builder's market, depriving you of one of the tiles. So most of these solo scores were set up specifically for the base game of Obsession. But recently, Dan has released a couple of sample solo cards for use with the Upstairs Downstairs expansion, specifically Tottenham, uh, Crawley here, and Poldark. He's been requesting feedback as to whether the scores on these cards are too high or too low or just right. And hopefully by the end of today's video, I'll be able to give him my personal take. I'm going to be playing with this Poldark card featuring an intermediate level score of 166 that I'm supposed to beat. Although I think Dan has since reclassified this card as expert level one or something along those lines. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, if I can score more than 166 points, I'll have won the game. So let's jump into it and see how I do. As usual, I won't be thinking too long or too hard in order to keep this video moving along, so I apologize ahead of time for obvious mistakes that I might make. Anyway, let's get started. Because we're playing upstairs, downstairs, I have to choose both a family and a bonus servant to start with. Now, normally I go with Howard and the head housemaid. But maybe for a little bit of change of pace, because I really like Howard. I don't know that I could necessarily pick anybody else, but because I like to start with that cook. But maybe today's game, we'll go with the useful man instead. All right, let's get going. So this is what's in the builder's market to start with. There's a brushing room I have my eyes on. Oh, there's a renovated kitchen, which I definitely have my eye on. It's a little expensive right now, but uh, hopefully down the road, I can uh, see if I can swing that. And these are my starting objectives. Let me make some notes so I don't go crazy here. Let me sort these here. So I'm trying to finish the game with at least one, uh, one uh, each female. And I want one for every two. Three ladies' maids. One for every three guests. And the paddock, the kennels, and the stables. Okay, that's a lot, and trying to fulfill one of these can be really tricky, especially if you're playing a standard game. What are the odds that all three of these tiles are going to come out? I'll have to make a judgment call at some point. These are all pretty good and varied objectives. Now, when you're playing solo, you don't use the milestones, even if you're playing an upstairs-downstairs game. So there are no milestones in this game. And this is my starting hand, my Howard family and my two starting guests. And fortunately, I started with one of each gender, which is nice. Because I chose the useful man as my bonus servant, I probably will go to the private study to get that bonus 200 pounds for each village fair. Well, the brushing room is only going to cost me 100 pounds. But it's this, this is the tile I'm really looking at, trying to get this renovated kitchen, because when this flips, it's going to allow me to add one guest beyond the guest count every time I add the cook to my activity tile. 
and I don't want the AI to steal that from me. So I want to get this as quickly as possible. Now, there's no way I'm going to be able to get it in round one. And frankly, I'm not even sure I can get it in round two. Okay, so given that, let's start with the Bowling Green so I can build up some cash. We'll put the cook on there to get an extra reputation. And we'll invite our two best guests as far as money's concerned so that would be the father i could go with carolyn west here but it's easier to get the hundred pounds from the son because he doesn't require a servant so this is going to get me 300 pounds plus 300 pounds or 600 pounds with a reputation of 1.2 So we'll take the brushing room for 100 pounds. Now you'll notice my program didn't ask me if I wanted to use the useful man to discount it by 100 pounds. That's because you can't use the useful man to reduce the cost of a tile to zero. Now when you're playing this type of solo game, the AI is going to roll the 20-sided die, and based on the results of this chart, it's either going to choose whatever shown in column one or it's going to choose whatever shown in column two if there's a monument somewhere in the display now there clearly there's no monument when you're first starting the game so it's going to be choosing from this column and maybe for the first roll or two i'll pause and we can look that up manually all right so the ai rolled a 13 and if we look up 13 that's position five, and therefore it's going to take the village fair stall and remove it from the builder's market. So on pause, and we'll continue. Now it's round two, and like I said, I do want to get to the private study before village fair. So we're going to go to the private study, acquires the butler. And I need to invite two family members. I only have two family members remaining, the mother and the daughter. Now, this is a little risky, like I usually say. Anytime you're getting an unscreened casual guest, you're not sure what you're going to get. We'll go with that. Fortunately, I got a casual guest with zero victory points. I'll take that. That's uh, Alice Bingley. And for the mother, we're going to draw two casual guests and choose. So I'm choosing between Anne Harlow, 100 pounds, and Beatrice Bottom, two reputation. She's also worth one victory point. I'm definitely going to go with Beatrice Bottom because I'll be able to play her, if not next round, maybe the round after that. We have 500 pounds. The renovated kitchen costs 700 pounds. I'm not going to make a purchase this round in hopes that I'll be able to get that renovated kitchen in round three. It rolled a 17. That's good for me. A 17 is no purchase. But when there's no purchase, it means that next turn it will definitely make a purchase because whatever it rolls on the, on the die it's going to reduce that value by five to a minimum of one. And now we're getting the village fair and using the useful man to get an additional 200 pounds. Let's see. So now I'm left with three women, all of whom require a lady's maid and one man who requires a valet. So I can't go to the front parlor because I don't have two ladies made. I would need the housekeeper for the tile. So therefore, I'm going to have to go to the main gazebo where we'll invite two gentry. Definitely Major Hawes. Now, I, I could put the cook on the tile and invite Beatrice Bonham, like I said, but because I'm planning to buy the renovated kitchen, I want to use that tile next round. And I can't use it if I don't have my cook. 
So I'm not going to use the cook on the main gazebo, and therefore I can't invite Beatrice Bonham. So I'm choosing between Carolyn West, 100 pounds, and Alice Bingley for one unscreened casual guest. Well, between those two, I'll take the 100 pounds, which is sure bet. So there's my 100 pounds. It bumps me into reputation too. So now I'll be able to invite Beatrice Bonham. And with all my money, I'm going to buy that renovated kitchen. So fortunately, I ended up with it. I was a little worried that luck wouldn't go my way. We rolled a one. Now remember that gets reduced by five, but we can't go any lower than a one. And a one is clearly position one when you look that up on the chart, position one. So the AI is gonna steal the barn and everything else is gonna shift left in the market. And now we're into the courtship. I was as usual, I was totally preoccupied, wasn't thinking about the courtship at all, and I got really lucky. I was probably going to tie, but we got lucky and got uh, sporting. So I have two points from my bowling green, and if we look, sporting for the first courtship is one point for the AI player. Got a VP card, I get to choose a Fairchild. I'm gonna take Charles Fairchild, so maybe I can get some additional reputation from the daughter. And I have to discard an objective card. I think this is the one we're gonna get rid of. And looking ahead at what I might want to purchase, Probably this croquet lawn makes sense now that I'm at Reputation 2. The flower room is also good. I'm getting close to passing, but remember I wanted to try to get that renovated kitchen flip. So that's where I'm going to go now. And I have to invite two gentry to this gourmet tasting. Now they could be of any prestige rating. We're definitely going to invite Lady uh, Harriet Ott and my other guest, now is going to be Beatrice Bonham, who I didn't invite earlier. Now I'm going to be using the housekeeper because I don't have a lady's maid for her. And fortunately, Harriet Ott doesn't require a servant. So I got 100 pounds from Harriet Ott. I got two reputation from Beatrice Bonham plus one from the cook, which gets me to 2.4. And now I'm evaluating the screen casual guest from Lady Harriet Ott. We're choosing between Roger Haskell, zero victory points and 100 pounds. Oh, this is not going to be a choice. Margaret Stowell, minus two victory points, pay 200 bucks to get two reputation. I'm definitely going with Roger Haskell. And with my 500 pounds, I think it probably makes sense to go with the croquet wand. Another service tile came out, the housekeeper's room. I definitely want to get that when I pass, which is probably going to be next round because I'm not going to be able to do anything with these three guests. AI rolled a 13. It takes the fifth card, the tennis court. And we just had the objective card draw. And I've got a French garden required. Haven't seen any signs of that. And maximum reputation. So hopefully this will be able to pay off for me. I've got a good selection of objective cards here. I do have a valet and I do have a ladies maid. I could go to the croquet lawn and, and do that and not pass. This round, we have to invite one of each, 
Now, because I'm going to pass, I might as well use Charles Fairchild now for, the, for his three reputation. And I'll pair him up with Alice Bingley. Unfortunately, that's going to be an unscreened casual guest, so I have to just hope for the best. Gets me to a family reputation of three. Fortunately, I have Theodore Lodge Esquire, zero victory points, another casual guest favor. But frankly, anytime I get a casual guest without negative victory points, I'm happy about that. All right. I have 600 pounds to spend. We could go with the flower room or the private family chapel. This costs 400 pounds. You know what, let's take the flower room this round and we'll come back for the private family chapel next round. I can use my useful man here to reduce the cost to 200 pounds. I will go ahead and do that. Turn it over to the AI. 18, another high roll, meaning it's not going to make a purchase this round, but it will reduce its roll next round by five. So nothing happens in the builder's market. So it's round seven, the round just before the courtship. How do we look here? We're tied on sporting. We're behind on everything else. So this is not going to be a good courtship for me coming up. And we're going to pass as planned. And we'll hire two servants. Because I have the brushing room, I'm definitely going to take an extra footman. And I'm going to take the head housemaid and purchase this housekeeper's room. It cost me 300 pounds of my 400. This time around, I don't want to use the useful man to discount it because next round is going to be the village fair when I'll be able to get 200 pounds from my useful man. So now I can use my head housemaid, the pink head housemaid, to screen a guest or to stand in for a housekeeper or a lady's maid. AI roll. Rolls a three, reduces that by five. It's going to steal the private family chapel from me. And now it's the courtship. Oh, I guess I got the housekeeper's room. Wow, a stroke of luck. I usually don't do well on courtship, especially when I'm recording these videos. This time we're definitely going to take Elizabeth because I want to get as many prestige guests as possible. And we have to discard an objective. I think the French garden is going to go. Village fair. We can go with the front parlor. I probably should get this done sooner rather than later. And honestly, I'd like the reputation right now more than the prestige guest. So let's do the front parlor this round, and probably we'll do the flower room next round. I'm going to put the cook on this. And because I have the culinary renown, this is going to be a three-handed game of whist. Let's invite Elizabeth Fairchild. Let's invite uh, our other prestige guest, Harriet Ott. Let's just take the mother and we'll screen a casual guest for her. So we're getting two screened casual guests out of this. And 100 pounds, and we get to 4.5 reputation. This is the choice for Harriet Ott, though it doesn't really matter. We're choosing between Frances Trotwood and Lady Sarah Lewis. They're both zero victory points, but Sarah doesn't require a servant, so I think that's the one I'm going to go with. 
And now we're doing the mother screen. We're choosing between Lady Alice and Thatcher, minus one victory point, and Elizabeth Jones, minus two victory points. I think this is probably the one I'm going to take. The Grand Ballroom, when flipped, scores seven points in Essentials, where I'm behind by 10, and I can invite six guests, three ladies and three gentlemen. The State Room is ultimately worth eight points, and six gentry, meaning I don't have to be as picky, and it only requires the butler. It doesn't require three servants. So... Between these two, I think the stateroom is a better choice. Another service tile came out. And we'll turn it over to the AI. So it rolled a 16. 16 is no purchase, so it will reduce its roll by 5 next time around. We move into round 10. Well, I'm at reputation four. I can't use the stateroom yet. So we're going to go to the flower room like we planned. We have to invite two ladies. Who do we have? We have Beatrice Bonham for two reputation. Oh, I'm using my head housemaid there because I don't have a uh, lady's maid. Where is that Sarah Lewis? Oh, here she is, because she didn't require a servant. Get up to Reputation 5.2. We've got a good guess there. Carol, Duke of Hazelton, requires two servants, but pays out a VP card and three reputation. And I have 200 pounds that's probably not going to be able to afford anything. No. And I think the AI is reducing this roll by five. It got a two, so it's going to take the grand ballroom away from me, which is okay. I'm not disappointed by that. So it's a builder's holiday. I am at reputation five. And I can use my useful man and put him on my activity tile to reduce its prestige rating by one, meaning I can play the state room this round, and I don't have to wait until the national holiday. So we're going to go with the state room. We're going to put the useful man on it. We're going to put the cook on it for an additional reputation and a seventh guest that we can invite. So now the question is, can I come up with seven guests? I can't use uh, Carol, unfortunately, because I don't have access to my butler. We can invite Peter Townsend. I think I'm going to go with Carol and West for now. I think I'd rather take him. Yeah, let's invite Major Hawes. We can invite the son. Because we're inviting Peter Townsend, let's definitely invite the daughter for the admirer bonus. Although we're going to get an unscreened casual guest from her. We'll invite the father. That gets me to six guests. But I'll take my chances, and, and I'll go with uh, Theodore Lodge. So how much reputation am I going to get out of this? Five, six from the cook, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten reputation. That's going to get me to 7.2. That's a good place to be. And we're taking 100 pounds from the sun.
So I'm looking good in that department. I got a bad guest here. So the first casual guest was John Ambrose. Nothing wrong with him. But this one is Elizabeth Perkins with an attack favor that doesn't do me any good because I'm playing a solo game. We have 900 pounds to spend. Long gallery would be a good choice. Oh, you know what? We have that uh, we have that VP card guest. I could invite him to the Queen Suite and get two VP cards for the price of one. I like the sound of that. So let's do that. That leaves me with three hundred pounds. Do I want any one of these? Where do I want the long gallery? I think I'm going to take the long gallery. I don't really need the reputation, but I can always cash it in for money. Oh, I don't have the 400 pounds to get the long gallery. Though I could easily cash in two. Yeah, let's do that. Let's cash two of that in for 100 pounds and go ahead and buy the long gallery. Now it is definitely going to reduce by 5, so this 20 turns into a 15, and a 15 is position 6, it's going to take the French Garden. Uh, our first monument came, came up, a prestige courtship, I came out ahead again. We'll go with Elizabeth Fairchild again. And now I have to discard an objective card. So this one is worth how much right now? One, two, three. If I hire two more, it'll be worth four. I think this is the one that's going to go. So we're at round 13. And uh, we're going to go to that queen suite. And we're going to invite Carol, Duke of Hazleton. Now, I don't have my butler. I'm going to have to spend three reputation to get him. But this is going to pay me three reputation. So that'll just uh, wash out. But I will be able to get two victory cards because I, I am able to double one of these favors. And a four and a five. Okay. No money to spend. It rolled a one, but now it's going to be choosing from the second column because there is a monument in the display. And on a one, it takes the monument. So it is going to go ahead and take the Garden Maze. Good for it. Seven points for the AI player. National Holiday. Though I don't really need the National Holiday. I'm doing pretty well reputation-wise. And there are only two more rounds of play. So I'm either going to pass now or I'm going to pass in next round. And passing in the last round is kind of anticlimactic, so I think I'll just pass now and get it out of the way. And I didn't get rid of the ladies' maid, so I might as well take two ladies' maids. So let's pass. Hire two servants. And we'll take two ladies' maids. AI player rolls a three takes from position one the smoking room
And we're at the last round of play. And I suppose that the long gallery, get that flipped so we can get uh, three additional points. It doesn't allow us to invite as many gentry, though, as the state room. But frankly, I don't know that uh, all those extra guests are going to add up to much. We're at seven reputation, so we don't need the reputation. And the cash is only going to be giving us one point for every 200 pounds. We're going to go with the long gallery. We'll put the cook on it. And let's look for our five best guests. So that would be Elizabeth Fairchild. I definitely want to get another VP card if I can. I am going to, oh, I can't do it because the butler is needed for the long gallery. So I can't invite uh, the Duke. Darn it. We might as well invite Peter Townsend. I got to get the mother so I can get rid of that minus three victory point guess so we need to dismiss favor for the mother i guess the father for 200 pounds so there's five gentry i need to refresh the butler put him on the tile I'll use the head housemaid to screen the casual guest from the daughter. So we're going to be getting four reputation, five, six, seven, eight, eight reputation. I definitely want to cash out some of this. So let's take that and let's take that and another 100 pounds. So eight reputations are going to get me to 7.1, I think. Oh, did I count the cook? Maybe nine. Maybe I'll get to 7.2. I think we're good to go. Yes. So we invited a two-pointer, Elizabeth Hastings. We're using the mother to dismiss whoever that was, Elizabeth Jones, I think. Uh, first, we're getting the screen casual guest from Diana. We're choosing between a zero pointer and a minus three. Oh, that doesn't take a whole lot of uh, smarts. And now we're dismissing a guest for the mother. And this is the one, Elizabeth Jones. Unfortunately, we have the minus one point here, but nothing much I can do about that. And our last choice for an improvement tile, the retiring room and, and writing stables came out. I'm trying to remember what that first tile was that we got rid of. I think it required the paddock. Oh, yeah, I never got rid of my notes. The paddock and the kennels, those, those tiles never showed up. So nothing, nothing was lost there. And uh, for a purchase, does it make sense? It makes sense to get the green room because it costs one point in cash. I can use the useful man actually to discount it to 200 pounds. That's one point worth of cash to get a, a tile that's worth three points on the front side. So I'm going to take the green room and reduce its cost by 100 pounds. The final die roll and the final courtship. A 10. Oh, the Manor Gargoyles is out there, so it's using the second column. A 10, it goes to position one. It doesn't take the monument, so it's going to take the drawing room. And final courtship is prestige. That's good for me. Four for four on courtships. Boy, if I don't win this, winning four for four on courtships, I have to be doing pretty well.
with four great objectives, except I have to get rid of one of these. So this is worth six, this is worth six. How many guests do I have is the question. So I have, uh, I'm holding 15 cards, 16, 17, 18, 19, less four from the family is, is 15 guests. That's worth five points. I think this is the one that's going to go. We lost. <laughs> I thought I played pretty well. If you count the monuments as an expert, I, I lost 173 to 162. But honestly, for me, what did I have here? A hand of 15 cards. That's not a lot. I didn't get as many guests as I usually. I probably could have done better in the guest department. Uh, those of you who watched this, I hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions or thoughts or comments, please include them. If you're new to the game and you haven't watched my base game tutorial or my upstairs downstairs tutorial, I will include links to those in the show notes. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.